Welcome to PyWatch YouTube. And today I wanted to talk about API rate limiting. So when you build your API and you expect a lot of traffic to it and cost of execution for whatever the API is doing, uh, then you definitely need to use API rate limiting. And actually when you use GPT-4, you see that message every time, like this GPT-4 is capped to, I think it's 25 messages in three hours. And that's a practical example of rate limiting. Like they limit the amount of calls or requests you can make to that interface, to that API. So in this video, I will show you a really cool plugin you can use with Fast API. And I also will show you how I did not know about that plugin, but also probably couldn't have used that plugin when I was implementing an API rate scenario in our own code for an API we have. So uh, let's dive straight in. I'm sure you have seen this message when using GPT-4. Uh, currently has a cap of 25 messages every three hours. And uh, that sparked my interest. Like, how does that work? Uh, it's called API rate limits. And definition, also extracted from ChatGPT, is API rate limits are restricted, imposed by service providers on the number of requests a client can make to an API within a given time frame. These limits are in place to prevent abuse, unsure fair usage, and maintain the stability and performance of the API and the underlying system. So when you're building an API in Python or whatever language, um, and you expect a high usage and you ha really have a cost of requests coming in, how you handle them, then this is pretty important. So in this video, I will show you two ways. Um, if we talk about Fast API, um, I stumbled upon this great library, Fast API Limiter. And although I have not used it yet, because I'm going to show you a second example where I kind of manually implemented this, uh, it's really nice. So you do require Redis. Um, so it uses Redis to keep track of the rate limiting. Um, then you can pip install it. And it works with the Fast API dependency system. So it has its own dependency called rate limiter, and um, you can give it times and seconds. So basically you can call it, it's explained here, allow two times request per five seconds. So this endpoint can now be called only twice in five seconds. Um, so really nice, nice interface, easy to use. You also need to then, uh, of course, uh, start your Redis, which is done in the startup method. And that's about it. Um, and I was actually <laughs> doing a face palm, like why did I didn't I use that for our app? So in the context, we uh, built this API code images. You can upload code snippets, and it will turn them into beautiful carbon images. And I was thinking, like, why didn't I do that rate limiting just like that? But then I looked at the code, and then it made sense that I um, went another way because. Um, so again, this this allows users to upload code snippets. It will build images, and the rate limiting factor here was well, how many times do I allow a user to use that? Because you know I don't want them to abuse the tool and just fill it with um, with images. And of course, there's also concern like, well, are the um, images actual code images? But I probably need to log an issue for that to also do that check. Maybe if the code is runnable or something. Um, so here's the website. Um, and again, this is all kind of also in premature optimization because the tool is not used that much at all, right? <laughs> but I will um, I will show you how I implemented this uh, without any package. Um, so in this scenario, we keep track of how many tips or code snippets a user is posting every day. So we have a helper function to get the tips posted today. Uh, for the current user. And then we just see what the length is of that collection. And if that's greater or equals the max daily snippets, which is an attribute set on the user, on the user model, uh, then we um, we bail out. Now, exceeding the number of requests, uh, actually this is, shouldn't be a 400. So I uh, locked an issue to actually change that to 429 because an exceeding rate limit the proper HTTP code is a 429. So I will get that fixed. Um, so you should return a 429. And uh, that's it. So honestly, I don't really know if this plugin would have helped me because this logic is pretty customized 
in a sense that we use we look at the user object um, and compare the number of tips the user posted with their daily credits or balance, right? Um, so yeah, that's a simple example how I used rate limiting manually in the app. But again, if it's about traffic and a number of calls against your endpoints, then by all means, don't reinvent the wheel. Go with a plugin. And um, as you can see, uh, you need to set up Redis, initialize it, and then you can use Fast API's beautiful dependency injection system to inject this extra dependency. And it's also kind of nice how they, um, I was looking at the code as well, how they test that. So uh, they actually, because I, I really love testing, they actually made an example app uh, with just a simple fast API and they apply the dependency on different endpoints with different values. So here, two requests in five seconds, one request in five seconds, and you can also have multiple limits. So five, uh, one request in five seconds, two requests in 15 seconds. So sometimes you need to go um, granular with that stuff, right? There's also support for WebSockets, but I'm not going into that. And then the tests, interestingly, then uh, use that example app. So they import that example app and then use the Starlet's test client and uh, start to make calls to endpoints and then goes well, goes well, boom, you get an API rate limit. And then the post, they have a different rate limit. So they're actually, so here allowed for two requests in five seconds. So that's why you get two successes and then a failure, but the post endpoint required at most one request in five seconds. Hence, you only get one time a 200 and then you already get the four to nine. And then of course use a sleep to uh, refresh the rate, right? So after five seconds, the rate um, is reset to zero. Hence you get a 200 again and not a 429. So I found that interesting how they tested that code. And I just wanted to show you that as well. So I hope that's helpful understanding API rate limiting. Um, it might not be something you worry about at the very start. Uh, as I mentioned for our code images API, it's not really used that much. So that's kind of a premature optimization. But if you're going to have an API that's going to be used by many, many users and there's a real cost involved, this is pretty critical to implement. Stay tuned. Tomorrow we are back with an exciting podcast interview, a really cool interview with Charles, um, Python developer, PDMer, and entrepreneur. So don't miss that. It will be on our channel tomorrow. And with that said, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow.